I don't want to be live on the internet. I just want to do Jupiter at night. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter Night. My name is Chris. I'm Alan. Tonight's episode, we're going to talk about a little secret underworld that I never knew anything about. Russia. And we found it kind of funny. Yeah, well, <laughs> Russian. <laughs> yeah. That generally sums up uh, Chris world I know never knew about. Russia I didn't existed. Even, not a thing. Well, I knew that, like, there was a spot out over there, and there was people over there, but I had no idea anything. I had no idea like their uh, love for atomic energy and things like that. Oh, have yeah. you seen Mother this stuff here? Russia loves that Mother stuff. Mother Russia does love this stuff. And the stuff we're talking about tonight is atomic lighthouses. Um, now, these are pretty interesting, and it kinda, we're going to go down a path of nuclear energy, a whole world of nuclear energy I didn't even know about. Now, these were mainly in, like, kind of up north, right? Further yeah, up north. Yeah, these were way up north. Um, see, I have a map here. Because that looks almost, like, kind of warm, kind of inviting right yeah, there. Yeah, it looked quite peaceful, but these ran along the top of uh, Russia's Arctic area between, like, the, the, the Arctic ice and their water area. They have a, you know, this is a fantastic trade route for them to get from one end of Russia to the other because it's so massive. And no one's going to be going there besides them. Right. It's just it's only going to be it's Russia. It's just a route for them, but the problem is, is to guide ships along this crazy corridor in, you know, icy waters, dark lots of rocks because they have to stay close to the shore so that way they don't hit ice and stuff uh in order to do that though they needed to be able to tell, tell them where to how to get and they had to build them a, a system to follow but why did they have to be atomic just because they could well probably i mean the russians the soviets did have like this love for what they they called uh the, some, the peaceful atomic peaceful energy or something like that where they were going to have a mini reactor in every home Okay, now you talk about that and being peaceful and everything, but then you had me look at some pictures, and as I scroll down, you they know, do look we're looking, freaky, yeah. then you start getting inside the lighthouse, and it's like, hey, that's yeah. a scary sign, and yeah. then you get, like, hey, doesn't that look like something's missing? Yeah, dude, that's, that's what happened. So they built these to be, they built these to run by themselves, but to be checked in on every couple of years. Ideally, they're supposed to run, run for 12 years. By themselves, right. without By themselves. having to do a thing. Well, so then the Soviet government collapses. They lose the records. Whoops. They go visit some of these old atomic uh, sites, and the nuclear materials are missing. And what's crazy... They're, they actually are missing. Like, Russia didn't take them out. They're... Right. They were stolen. Well, here's what here's what's crazy, is they think the people went in there, and these little... They're called, like, little mini reactors, and they have an official name, but they're Russian, and I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, but uh, the idea was that these little things uh, were self-contained, but people would come there in these abandoned lighthouses, which apparently don't sound very secured, and they would enter, to, enter there to get precious materials, just like aluminum and, and copper and things like that. They think maybe they had no idea. And Maybe some, or maybe some bad people went in there to get the nuclear materials because you could make a, a a particularly type of nasty bomb with this thing. Someone needs to call Jack Bauer. <laughs> he'll take care of it. Yeah, he'll, seriously, he'll make the problem this go is away. A Jack Bauer and we won't kind of even problem. know about it. It'll happen like that so I know. quick. Well, you know, this is one of those weird things because I guess this has been going on. I mean, these things uh, were put in. Uh, some of them were put in like in the early 80s and stuff like that. I mean, we're talking, some of them were put in before that. Yeah. And uh, they, at first, they started shutting down and having problems and, and they knew about it, but they didn't say anything, the Russians. Like, what do you mean having problems? Well, I'll give you an example. So they decide, all right, well, we need to go clean this mess up, right? So they sent out this helicopter and this team to secure the reactor. They drop this line in with the helicopter. Okay. They pick it up. And they're hauling this reactor out of there. They're hauling it by a tether on a helicopter because they can't, for one, it's super heavy, right? I mean, it's, they're heavy, right? And then for two, uh, well, it's extremely dangerous and they don't want to get radiation poisoning. So they're doing it with, that seems even more dangerous, swinging around a big nuclear Well, reactor. that's what, guess what happened? It broke and it they, fell. And they it, got in a massive weather situation and they had to drop one. And they actually haven't recovered it since they dropped it. So it's in the water somewhere? It's on land somewhere. Is that better or worse? <laughs> I think that's worse, personally. Uh, they now have gone through and painted in, in different different languages, you know, hazardous, radiation, all over the place to try to keep people going, from going there. But the damage has been done. A lot of these places, you just get up to them, near them, and they're registering as uh, as as dangerous levels of radiation. Just sitting there. So and the US not, has been that trying, doesn't go away. No. The U.S. has been trying to work with uh, the Russian government since 2004, I think, on cleaning these up. Because the main problem is transporting them, right? Well, obviously, if yeah. they couldn't do it. It's pretty wild. It's, it's very almost sci-fi fallouty kind of thing. Yeah. 
this is going to cause a Russian wasteland. Yeah, it is, and and they're all over up there. Uh, there's um, as far as these reactors go. Not there's not this many lighthouses, but as far as these reactors go, they estimate that the Russians build about a thousand of these little mini oh. reactors. Yeah. Um, now there, I think they, I think there's like maybe seven hundred in use today. I mean, some of them are still powered. Pretty interesting. Um, but along these lines, because while we're talking about Russia and their nuclear power, because they're doing something now. Yeah. Because it's a new government. New government. What's time the for new, new government ideas? doing, Chris? <laughs> because you know that old Russian government—they yeah. made a lot of mistakes with nuclear things. They put them in lighthouses. Come on, like what the hell? Yeah. So this new Russian government has come up with this great new plan. You know what's better about? You know what you could do in in today with today, today's technology? You can make nuclear reactors. They're portable, movable, massively so. Can you put it in your phone? <laughs> no, not yet. Oh. That would be ultimate battery life. My battery sucks. <laughs> Uh, the, the Russians are building a floating nuclear reactor on a boat. Wait, so they're going to be putting more nuclear reactors in and around the water. Yeah, buddy. That's a pretty much it. Um, so they're not changing too much from old Russia, just making it portable. The idea is they're going to hold They're going to go up into the Arctic area and they're going to start drilling for oil. Massive amounts of oil. So a nuclear boat is going to be drilling for oil. Well, it's going to be providing the power for the people drilling for oil. And you see the Russians, if you're watching the video version, there's a, there's a map on the screen and there's a red area. And the red area, cleverly enough, is owned by the Russians. And then there's uh, also a ton of territory, surprisingly owned by the Canadians, Go Canada. The U.S. is in there and a couple other countries. And this is kind of a contested area, but the idea is not everyone is fully bought off on what Russia thinks it owns up there. But the idea is they ship this barge up there, and they say it can supply power for up to 45,000 people like you know water lights all that kind of stuff they're gonna be able to build a colony up there this thing's gonna be able to go up there for years before it needs servicing like like a dozen years pretty wild right so they're getting super super lined up for massive drill operations up there i just know that i forget i, I my memory you know i don't pay attention to the news that much so i remember hearing a little something about some oil problem yeah yeah, yeah. there's something with an oil in the water I, ocean something, i don't know something but yeah. i thought that it was kind of a big deal and fr people were freaking out and now they're having a I nuclear know. boat do it i know dude we cannot awesome we cannot even pull off drilling in the gulf and now we're talking about drilling in the arctic it's like someone needs to go to these people and just smack them and be like no i know just stop we don't <laughs> know just so the problem is is russia needs oil badly and Russia says they're gonna they're gonna fight for their right to drill here. Fight for your right for different yeah. energy. Make nuclear cars, and then you won't need oil. Right? Here's another thing they say, which whenever 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 a government spokesperson says this, I never buy it. We can guarantee the safety of our units 100. percent All risks are absolutely ruled out. Really. Until an unforeseen event or a human error or yep. a drunk person or someone with fatigue or a leak. Or a failed computer. Yep, yep, and then that's, yeah, or, <laughs> yep. Uh, now, they say this in regards to some of the disputed territory that they might be drilling in. Russia does not want a conflict with other countries surrounding the Arctic. And this is uh, Vladimir Kotov or something like to that effect. Uh, he is the uh, essentially the secretary of press uh, for the uh, Russian government. But naturally, uh, nobody wants to give up their territory. So we will make a huge effort to hang on to the, ter the territory which we think belongs to Russia. Of course, conflict is always possible, but I repeat that the politicians currently in power at, in Russia want compromise. <laughs> so basically scary. they're like, hey, we know you say don't do this and, you know, maybe wait a little bit, but uh, big middle finger, we're going to do it anyways. Yeah, and we're going to take our hey, nuclear boat up there. Hey guys, there. you guys are cool if we party here, right? Yeah, yeah. no one worries, we're all friends. They're going to take their nuclear boat up there and they're going to they're gonna be able to find it by are following their nuclear lighthouses. Are they going to share the power with us if we're around to drill and stuff? Because that's the only... Well, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to have a little bit of that territory, yeah. So, but uh, I think maybe there's, maybe that's part of the dispute. Is okay, here's another part of my problem. All right, lay it on me, dude. I recently ordered a washer and dryer. They couldn't even deliver that properly. I know. And I know. it took like a month and a half just to get that, the wrong one delivered at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Now, is that the Russians' fault, though? Probably. Yeah, I was thinking so. I was thinking that through. I thought it was the Russians' fault. It's the Russians and the politicians. <laughs> it's bullshit. Now, they you, screwed me over. What do you think about Time your, and time again. You're just sitting here, ordering a washer and dryer, right. minding your own business, 
And meanwhile, there's atomic lighthouses going on. There's atomic platforms being or nuclear nuclear platforms being built. All this stuff going reactors on. gone missing. Reactors gone completely missing. And there's some thought, there's some school of thought that there's been some terrorist units near so some of the places that those atomic lighthouses operated. Stephen Hawking is correct. We're all going to die. He did call it, didn't he? That is true. Anyways, uh, we've got some links in the show notes to all the information about this, including this massive atomic platform that the Russians are building to power uh, their, their drilling operations. Uh, great work here by the BBC. Oh, look, the Russians even put a little atomic symbol on the it's, side of the it's boat. It's a good video. It's a good video. It's, it's scary you know, as crap. Yeah. yeah. So we'll put that links to that in the uh, the show notes as what as much as they are so far today. Right. Okay, everyone. Well, uh, so Jupiter Night will be making a move to 8 o'clock eventually once we work that out. I know. We've been talking about it. I think we're going to do it. I haven't heard of this. Well, that's why we're not doing it yet. So cool. well, you and I, we're going to talk about it, but I want to prepare, I want to prepare people because I've been talking about it for a few nights. If you want to tune in live, you can do that over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. And either way, we'll be there at some point. So, you know, that's something. Yeah. Um, and all of the show notes are over at jupiterbroadcasting.com where you can see the videos and the links and all the pictures of the lighthouses, the creepy pictures of the lighthouse logs, things like that, right? Um, so check that out over at jupiterbroadcasting.com and just find the post for this episode and that's where you'll see that. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching tonight's episode of Jupiter Night, and we'll see you tomorrow night.